uh, introductions. Can you hear me? Uh, my voice is clear. Yes, yes, perfectly. Okay, so uh, now I share my uh, screens. So, yes, so thanks a lot. Uh, I mean, that's uh, to allow me to give the keynote uh, lectures on this, I mean, that's an interesting conference. So today's my topic would be introduced about the bow inspired strategy to break trade-off between strength and toughness. So as we all know, historically, the scientists and engineers uh, struggle to uh, achieve strong and tough materials. So as shown in these figures, our goal is to uh, obtain the materials on the uh, right top corners. However, it's very difficult because we know the strength and the toughness are mutually exclusive. So that means if you increase the strength, probably you would sacrifice toughness or vice versa. So traditionally, we have, I mean, that uh, chemical-based approach or micro-mechanics approach based on, I mean, that method. So to develop the new chemical formulations, that means new materials, or we can incorporate short fibers, particles, long fibers into the matrix to, I mean, that uh, enhance strength and toughness simultaneously. However, this traditional method currently cannot meet the challenges from the industries and the science. So another, I mean, that's interesting uh, method recently uh, received a lot of interest, which is called the bio inspired approach. So today I will just introduce one of, I mean, that's interesting uh, bow inspired strategy to break the trade off between these two mutually exclusive materials. So, here, this is my, I mean, that's a favorite uh, creatures in the nature. It's called the suture tessellation. Suture tessellation. What's the suture meaning? Suture means that a softer interfacial layer articulates two building blocks. This was defined in the biological science. In the medical, they have different definitions. So here, this is how the suture definates it. And the tessellation, I mean, that this is like a method how you tessellated the, the geometries into the 2D or 3D uh, space. So suture tessellation, this is the total the meaning of it is. And actually, this kind of patterns or geometries is quite wide in nature. So for example, we observed the suture tessellations in the turtle shell, in the skin of the box fish. Here you see these zigzag patterns. And also we observed the similar patterns in the woodpeck beaks. Although these uh, suture tessellation patterns across the multi-scales from the centimeter scales to the nanometer scales. And also these interesting patterns has not only been found in the animals, but also it can be found in the uh, plants. So here uh, is the seed code of the common millet. As we look uh, close on the morphology of the seed code, we identify that these fascinating, complex, hierarchical uh, suture tessellations on the surface into the different uh, locations. So this is like uh, the motivations, I mean, that's why I would look at this suture tessellation in the nature. And here is my favorite, I mean, that's a species, which is called the potolaca uh, seeds. So potolaca species actually have more than a hundred subspecies in the world, from the cold regions to the hot regions, from the wet areas to the dry areas. You almost can find these species in all the world. And looking at that seed, it's very tiny. Here I have one assumptions. Because the seed coat majorly is take the mechanical protections for the seed. So my, assume, my assumption is the seed coat majorly play the important role, probably the most important role to help, I mean, that's this seed more environment adaptively to the different timing, mean, that's the conditions. So let's look at the close uh, about the morphology of this code. So in here, this is the scanning electron microscope images uh, observed, I mean, that's 
on the morphologies of the seed coat. And we observed that this fascinating uh, suture tessellated uh, patterns. And in here, unlike the suture tessellation on the turtle shell or the box fish, in the Portalaca seeds, the suture regions actually occupies uh, a very large areas. It cannot be negligible. So in here, in order to understand the mechanical functions about these suture patterns, I needed to do some, I mean, that's a simplifications. So here, the figure E shows my simplifications. I use the hexagonal, regular hexagonal shapes with the sinusoidal curves uh, to represent these suture tessellated patterns. In here, L0 means the suture lens and L is the side lens. Traditionally, in the biological science, they use L0 over L to represent the suture index complexity. But that's not enough to understand the mechanical functions. So here I introduce theta as the weakness of these suture patterns in order to understand the loading mechanisms. Uh, and also in here, I keep the thickness of the interfacial layer is the same as the T. And also I represent the soft interfacial layer. H represents the hard building blocks. So here, this is like uh, my, I mean, that's uh, uh, the simplified models uh, by observing the uh, morphologies of the seal code. And uh, uh, this, I mean, that's a work that has been featured in the uh, cover of the advanced materials. So in order to, I mean, that to, understand, to investigate the uh, multi-materials, because we have like the two different materials with the contrasting stiffness. So in here, I use the multi-materials 3D printer. The technology is the polyjet technologies. So in here, the machine was object 260, and it can provide uh, very good uh, resolutions. And uh, when you print, I mean, the two contrasting materials, it will not have like the bonding problems. And we have, let's say, a large material libraries, library to choose the materials. So in this I mean, topic, I choose the two different materials. First is the most stiffer materials in the library, which is called the Vero White Plus materials. And here I use the dog bone specimens um, from the ASTM standard and the figure B shows my stress strain curves. I also use the numerical simulations, which are uh, used using the power law plasticity model with damage evolution law to curve feeding my stress strain curves. And here, this is like the material properties I inserted into the abacus. That's like the curve feeding materials, uh, material properties. And in the uh, Tango Black Plus, uh, this is, let's say, the most uh, soft materials uh, in the uh, material library of the uh, object to six zeros. And it's a very library materials. And in here, in order to get the uh, true properties of the interfacial layer, here I introduce the uh, butt fly uh, uh, edges to largely reduce the stress concentrations at the edges. So therefore I can get uh, I mean, that's the true material properties of this interfacial layer. The thickness is around 0 0.4 millimeter. And the figure B shows the force displacement curve of my experiments. And in here, the numerical simulations also was employed uh, by using bilinear uh, plastic hardening model with the linear damage evolution uh, to curve fitting my force displacement curve. And here is the uh, material properties. So here I just want to highlight one thing. If you look at the stiffness about, I mean, that's the ratios between the uh, most stiffer materials and most softer materials, it's around 500. So that's already enough to mimic uh, the uh, suture tessellated materials. After that, uh, I understand my materials so I use the 3D printer to print my examples. Here, uh, I'm showing you four cases uh, from when theta equals to the 90, it's a completely flat interface and going to the most weaviest case when theta equals to the 10 degrees. 
And I use five cells in order to avoid the boundary uh, effects from the testings. And the figure B shows my uh, numerical uh, models. Here, uh, the solid lines represent my unit cell and the dashed lines represent my uh, RVE, the representative volume element. The reason to choose a four times larger unit cell in order is to uh, observe how the crack propagates through the interface. And uh, here I, uh, I uh, indicate direction one and direction two. This is two loading conditions I would be uh, um, evaluate the mechanical performance to understand whether it is uh, an isotropic behavior or isotropic behavior. The reason to choose these two, uh, uh, let's say directions uh, or the axis is hexagonal shapes has two symmetric uh, axes. So this is like the represented the two symmetric axis in here. Okay, so now I would like to show you the most favorite uh, uh, part in here. This is, let's say, the experiment I performed, and uh, all I mean, the test was performed under the uh, quasi static uh, situations. The first case, representative case, is the specimens. Uh, I mean, that when the flat interface uh, under the uniaxial tensile test at the direction one. So let's look at how it behaves. And in here, I just want to highlight the volume fractions of the hard materials in the flat interface, it's around 95 percentage. So you see, after the peak uh, stress, the crack initiates and propagates very uh, fast. So the uh, mechanical performance of these uh, specimens shows uh, brittle catastrophe failures. But if we increase the waviness of the interface, some interesting part uh, we can observe. So first, the strength becomes higher, much higher compared to the first case. And when uh, the uh, force after the peak uh, stress, uh, the stress after the peak stress, the crack still, uh, I mean, that's uh, initiate very slow, uh, crack initiate and propagate very slow. So that's how, I mean, that's uh, the uh, behaviors shows more ductile-like failures. So compare about these two, we can say in the weakest case, we observe higher strength and also the toughness. And also in here, I just want to highlight in here, actually the volume fraction of the hard materials is smaller than the first case. So in order to understand the, uh, this mechanical performance, uh, I would like to uh, show you the parametric uh, studies about the mechanical behaviors in here. So in here, uh, the red curves represent theta equals to the 10, most of the case, theta equals to 20, 40, and 90. Uh, and uh, uh, no matter how we take the load in the direction one or in the direction two, the strength and the toughness increase as we increase the waveness. That's very interesting because it seems we break uh, the trade-off between the strength and toughness. And also in here, the dash curves represent my uh, numerical simulation uh, predictions. So numerical simulation actually can predict the results quite very well. And in here, the figure C and the figure D shows the digital image correlation results. And all uh, these eight cases were applied at the same uh, global strain. And we would like to say, uh, to, to, to see how the local strain it is. So in here, very interesting for the flat interface, the local strain can uh, go up to 1.5 percentage, and it's localized, the strain localized at the flat interface. However, if we uh, increase the waviness and actually the strain localization largely reduced, it's, I mean, that's almost three times lower than the first one. And uh, the figure E, shows the final crack patterns. And what we can see the final crack patterns are consistent with the string localization. I mean, that's the regions. So we take the effective material properties from the stress string curves of all these uh, eight cases. And let's first look at the figure B 
and figure C. So in the figure B and the figure C, it shows the effective uh, strength and also the effective uh, toughness. Uh, interestingly, the weaviness increased almost twice uh, as compared about to the uh, flat interface. So we can increase I mean, toughness twice. And also, I mean, that behavior is, uh, is uh, close to the isotropic. And in the fig C, the toughness almost increased six times. I mean, that higher than the flat interface. So that's a huge improvement. And also the performance is quite, let's say, the isotropic. Another interesting point I want to raise in here is the stiffness. So when we increase the waviness, that means the C-type decrease, the effective stiffness of the composite also increase. That's unusual because according to the traditional uh, mechanics of the composite, you remember the volume fraction of the hard materials for the uh, stiffer case is only 80 percentage. It's almost 50 percentage lower than the flat interface. So it has the uh, opposite trend as the prediction of the hashing strickman low bound. So that means there should be some unknown loading mechanisms from that suture tessellated materials. So I will just, I mean, let's uh, talk about this a little bit later in one slide later. But another thing I want to highlight in here is the fig D. Actually, I mean, that's in order to understand why I mean that these composite materials can absorb more energies. So we would like to know which part or uh, contribute more important to absorb energies. So in here, UH means the uh, energies absorbed by the hard phases and UO is the energies absorbed for the total composite. This data was obtained from the finite element analysis. So these ratios can tell us during the deformations, which uh, phase hard or soft uh, phase, which I mean, play more, uh, more important role. So from these uh, figures, what we can see here, when you have the higher uh, weaviness, actually the hard phase was involved uh, more to absorb the more energies. So that's why I mean, that's the ratios for the theta m uh, equals to the, I mean, the 10 degrees, it becomes the highest. So that's a very, I mean, that's a interesting observations to explain. I mean, that's why, I mean, that's we can, uh, this weaving this can uh, help the composites absorb more energies. And uh, here is like the uh, mechanics models I developed to understand the stiffness. So in here, I use the uh, virtual complementary work uh, to derive my equations since we do not have a, I mean, that I only have half hour, so I just briefly talk about it. And in here, I built my mechanical models and perform the free body diagrams to analyze it. And here I give like important factors, shape factors, weaveness, non-dimensional wavelengths, and the number of waves to derive my equations. The most important is the beta shape factors. It would be decided whether it's a hexagonal, suture, tessellation, rectangular, or diamond shapes. Here, I just want to show you, I mean, that's the one part, the uh, theoretical predictions of the hexagonal sutures in the two different loading directions. And actually the analytical models can predict uh, the performance uh, quite very well. The difference uh, is around 7.9 percentage regarding the predictions and the finite element results. Uh, yes. And here is like the understanding about why the stiffness increased due to the weaviness. And uh, uh, here I would also to show you the biometric studies on the stiffness ratios to amplify the strength and the toughness. So as you remember, the uh, material right libraries, I mean, that's from the 3D printer uh, can provide us the maximum is the stiffness ratio is uh, about 500. So in order to understand whether, I mean, that these different ratios would influence, I mean, that sort of the toughness and strength, here I perform the numerical simulations uh, as a function of the different stiffness ratios uh, to see how the performance it is, whether the trend would be changed. So here, these two figures actually shows the trend would not be changed. The weaviness actually can uh, increase strength and toughness, no matter, I mean, how the stiffness uh, uh, ratios it is. But when you have the larger stiffness ratios, actually we can amplify the enhancement 
of the strength and the toughness. That's a very, I mean, that's interesting uh, observations from these studies. And also another interesting, I mean, that uh, results identified from these studies is about the negative Poisson's ratios. As we all know, negative Poisson's materials with the negative Poisson's ratios normally have the better energy absorptions. So in here, uh, at the beginning, when I performed the experiment test, when stiffness ratios equal to the 500, I observed when theta equals to the 20 degrees, the Poisson's ratio is close to zero. So my, I mean, that's the question is whether we play with the stiffness ratios, whether we can achieve the negative Poisson's ratios. And luckily, when we increase the stiffness ratio, the post negative Poisson's ratios can be easily uh, achieved. So that's very unique because normally we cannot find, let's say the nature materials have the uh, negative Poisson's ratios. So in here, this is suture tessellated materials, uh, or I mean, that's bowing spouts and locks. We can easily uh, tune the Poisson's ratios from the negative to the positive by changing the stiffness ratios and also the weakness. So that's also, uh, I mean, that's an interesting observations in here. And finally, finally, I mean, that's uh, since we have the analytical models, we have like the result of experiments and the uh, uh, simulations. Now we can understand how, I mean, that's nature to uh, improve the strength and the toughness by using these strategies. So this figure A shows the uh, species across from the nano uh, scales to the centimeter scales, which employ the uh, suture tessellated uh, bow and spout strategies. And uh, uh, we see, I mean, that's actually the animals and plants may have the different, I mean, that's the strategies because I mean that we can easily to see in the animals, the amplitude of the uh, suture is very small, but in the plant is the different. So here figure C is showing the statics. In the figure C, what we can see here is AL over square of the root of S defines the areas of the suture regions. For all the animals, the, uh, uh, this I mean that the values is very small, but for the plant, the suture regions normally I mean that uh, occupies a lot of I mean that part of the epidermis cells, and also looking at the weaviness for the animals, the weaviness is higher, but for the plants, the weaviness is small. So, regarding in here, uh, we plot I mean that the analytical models from that. Uh, uh, from my models. And in here, we can understand the reasons. Because if we look at, I mean, that's uh, how I mean that the animal choose, because in the animals, the bodies, uh, we have uh, much more material selections than the uh, plants. So the stiffness ratios, what animal choose is large or uh, stiffness ratios. So they do not need a lot of, I mean, that regions of the suture regions. So the suture regions, I mean, that becomes a smaller in here. But in the plants, the strategy is completely different because they do not have, they have limited, I mean, that's material selections. So they have to employ large regions of the suture regions in order to, I mean, that's uh, uh, improve the strength and also the toughness to have more mm, better energy, I mean, that's uh, absorptions for the mechanical protections. That's like the two different, I mean, that's uh, uh, strategies and might be, I mean, that's useful for our let's say industrial applications. So finally, here is the conclusions. So in these studies, uh, we find a very interesting, I mean, that the biological strategies, which uh, could, I mean, that mutually amplify the strength and toughness. And also we can, I mean, that's include the authenticities. And that, I mean, that's a complex task can be easily tuning. I mean, that's by varying the weaviness of the suture tessellation. So, Yes, this is my, I mean, that's a presentation and I hope I mean that's in times and uh, yeah, welcome all the questions.